Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game the video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and this one is titled Royal Chasers, as we're taking a look at a blue-red wizard deck featuring Kaza, a Royal Chaser from Zendikar Rising, a 2-mana 1-2 legendary human wizard with flying and haste, and we can tap Kaza, and the next instant or sorcery spell we cast this turn costs X less to cast, where X is the number of wizards we control as this ability resolves. So Kaza is great in combination with the various kicker cards from Zendikar Rising, like Royal Eruption and Into the Royal, since we have the flexibility of casting them for 2 mana, but in a late game with the extra mana that Kaza provides, we can also easily kick them. And then Kaza also synergizes quite nicely with Goblin Wizardry, a 4 mana instant that creates 2 1 1 red Goblin Wizard creature tokens with prowess, prowess meaning they get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non creature spell. So Kaza is great with the Wizardry, as we can potentially play a turn 3 Wizardry thanks to a turn 2 Kaza ramping into it, and then making two wizard tokens also means we have now two additional wizards in play to give us a mana discount with Kaza's ability. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got some cheap card draw effects, with two copies of Chilling Trap, which gives target creature minus 4, minus 0 until end of turn, and if we control a wizard, we also get to draw a card, and there's no shortage of wizards in the deck. Then we also have the full play set of Opt to scry 1 and draw a card, and four copies of Shock to deal 2 damage to any target at instant speed. And all these cheap 1-mana instants also synergize nicely with the prowess tokens from the wizardry. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Into the Royal, a 2 mana instant that returns target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and we can also play it with Kicker for an additional 1 and a blue, in which case we get to draw a card as well. So with Kaza potentially generating 2 mana, it only costs us double blue to cast a kicked Into the Royal. Then we also have the full playset of Seagate Stormcaller, a 2 mana 2 1 human wizard at Mythic Rare, and when the Stormcaller enters a battlefield, we can copy the next instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost 2 or less we cast this turn, and we can choose new targets for the copy. So the Stormcaller also synergizes nicely with the kicker cards, because we can still play a kicked into the Royal after casting the Stormcaller, and the into the Royal will still have a converted mana cost of 2, even if we play it kicked. So now we get to draw 2 cards and bounce 2 null land permanence thanks to the Stormcaller. And then the Stormcaller itself also has Kicker for 4 and a blue, in which case we get to copy the spell twice. Then we also have the full playset of Magmatic Channeler, a 2 mana 1 3 human wizard, and as long as there are 4 or more instant and or sorcery cards in our graveyard, Channeler gets plus 3 plus 1, so it turns into a 2 mana 4 4, and it also takes advantage of the various mill decks in the format, because if the opponent tries to mill us, we'll end up with more instants and sorceries in the graveyard, turning Channeler into a 2 mana 4 4 much faster. And then of course there's no shortage of cheap instants and sorceries otherwise to synergize with our Channeler and Stormcaller. And we can also tap Magmatic Channeler and discard a card in order to exile the top two cards of our library, and then we choose one of them and we can play that card this turn. So it gives us an interesting way of looting away extra lands we don't need, maybe an additional copy of Kaza, which is legendary, so it's nice to have a way of getting rid of them. And then we also have the full playset of Royal Eruption, 2 mana sorcery that deals 3 damage to any target, and we can also play it with Kicker for 5 additional mana, in which case we get to deal 5 damage instead. Then we've got our full playset of Kaza, and then topping off our curve, we've got our 4 copies of Goblin Wizardry, as well as 2 copies of Inscription of Insight, a 4 mana sorcery with 3 different modes. We can either return up to 2 target creatures to their owner's hand, we can scry 2 and then draw 2, or target player creates an XX blue illusion creature token, where X is the number of cards in their hand, and it also has Kicker for 2 and double blue, so for 8 mana total we get to choose all 3 modes instead, so that's another nice way of leveraging the extra mana that Kaza provides. Provides. And then we also have some dual face lands here with Shatter Skull Smashing and Seagate Restoration, which are additional mana sinks, but we can also play them as untapped lands at the cost of 3 life, Smashing dealing X damage divided as we choose among up to 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers, and if X is 6 or more the Smashing deals twice X damage divided as we choose among them instead. And then Seagate Restoration lets us draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hands, plus 1, and we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game, and costs 7 mana to cast. And then the rest of the mana base includes 8 islands, 6 mountains, 4 of the pathway, and then 2 temple of epiphany which comes into play tapped and lets us scry 1. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn 2 Kaza into a turn 3 wizardry. And then, what do I start with here? 
I'm tempted to keep the restoration in hand to maybe cast with Kaza eventually. And then I'm just going to opt now instead of keeping it for after the wizardry to try and hit my land drops. All right, might have a change of plan here. And we might need to just uh, kill the innkeeper instead. Bold on the opt for now. So what two drop can my opponent cast in an adventure deck? They can't really cast a Bone Crusher Giant or Lobstroke Beast yet, so maybe I can wait a turn and just play Kaza for now. But it's probably not worth the risk. They might be on a black green adventure deck, in which case they could have Falmar Knight as a cheap adventure creature. All right, so this turn I can play Kaza and then could technically Royal Eruption, but we're just gonna smash for one. Then I don't have a ton of blue mana at the moment to cast Restoration but I'm still going to hold on to it as opposed to playing it tapped here. So I would prefer to draw blue lands now instead of mountains to help me cast the Kicked into the Royal and to maybe eventually cast Seagate Restoration after we make some more wizards. Opponent's going to ramp with Cultivate. Alright, Inscription's not bad. So... Let me just inscription here to draw some cards. And then... Yeah, don't really want either of these. And yeah, there's my blue mana, perfect. It's gonna be a Lotus Cobra. And a Beanstalk Giant. Would have also been reasonable to play the Wizardry first instead of the uh, Inscription to maybe get some damage in, get some more Wizards for Kaza. So double Lotus Cobra makes me regret getting rid of that Shatter Skull Smashing. I could play the Wizardry. Kaza makes three mana. But that's not enough for a Kicked Into the Royal since I don't have double blue. I could play Royal Eruption afterwards and kill a Cobra. I guess that's okay. So play this as a blue source. Play Wizardry keeping up red mana. And then Royal Eruption, one of the Cobras. And then hopefully nothing bad happens to Kaza and we can play Seagate Restoration next turn. Terror of the Peaks could be bad. Do they have a follow-up creature? Makes red mana. But our opponent passes. Alright, so... Kaza can make three mana. So I've got essentially eight mana to work with here. But I could potentially draw into an untapped land, and then I can still enter the Royal Terror of the Peaks. So that's definitely an option. Yeah, I think I like that. So I need to draw a blue source, essentially. There we go. And hit for six. Bit of a risky play if we didn't find blue mana there. But I wanted to cast Restoration while we still had a few cards in hand. Otherwise I kicked into the Royal to bounce Terror also would have been reasonable. So they've got four mana now. It does appear like they have some options. The Great Hench shows up. So, let me play a Seagate Stormcaller. And then play it unkicked.
Kaza will make some mana. And then we can play Kicked into the Royal. Bouncing Terror. And bouncing the Great Henge. And then probably fine to just kill the Cobra. Smash for six. And then with a scry from Temple, I'm just looking for another spell I can copy with my Stormcaller. Replace Terror. My opponent has been unable to get a Tower of the Peaks trigger. They haven't had any cheap creatures to play. They were one mana short of casting Hench here, I believe. Just a Shadow Skull smashing for one, and Royal Eruption was quite a draw. So I get to play another Stormcaller. Tap Kaza for a Billy Mana, and then play a Kicked Royal Eruption. And I could just go to the opponent's face here, I guess. But it's more fun to kill the Dragon. And then attack for four. Well, that was a great showcase of the power of Kaza Royal Chaser, generating extra mana with the Wizard tokens, and then Seagate Stormcaller also having great synergy with the various kicker cards. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? It's pretty bad since we're missing a cheap wizard to go with the Chilling Traps. So I'm casting some Royal Eruptions early on, hoping to draw lands for Wizardry before we can leverage Chilling Trap. I mean, it's not the worst hand ever, but it's definitely not great. I'll try it. See, get Stormcaller is an excellent draw if we can find a second blue source, because then I can Stormcaller into Chilling Trap to just draw two. Skull Prophets, so put it on some sort of graveyard deck. For now, we'll just kill the Prophets. And it's going to be another Prophets. Alright, so don't get to Stormcaller Chilling Trap. I could Stormcaller copy Royal Eruption to deal 3 to my opponent. I think I would rather just play a Wizardry here. It's gonna be an Elder Gergroth. So next turn I can copy my Royal Eruption to kill Gergroth. And there's my blue source to have access to Chilling Trap as well. I'll hang on to my Chilling Traps for now, as opposed to using it to get a bit more damage in. If they play another Gargaroth or maybe reanimate it, I might have to use both Chilling Traps in the same turn to pump the Wizards to take out Gargaroth. It's going to be a Lenor Visionary. Alright. So let me start by attacking. I 
Murder Strider takes out Stormcaller, that's fine. They might be missing the part where my Goblin tokens are also Wizards. We'll pass. And then we're just hoping to draw more non-creature spells to enable prowess. And Grim Tutor, that's kinda scary. They might have a Massacre Worm here to kill all my goblins. Opt isn't a bad draw though. I guess there's a world where I need to keep both instants in hand to get my tokens out of Massacre Worm range, but that's not this world since we can just kill the opponent. As we get to attack with everyone, Chilling Trap can shrink down the opposing Murder Strider, and that prevents the lifelink, and then we get in for at least 9 damage. And the Shock will also seal the deal here, but isn't really necessary. Yeah, it's easy to underestimate how much damage these uh, prowess tokens can do. They might not seem like much, but they deal quite a bit of damage if you can combine them with cheap cantrips. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion Sky Nomad deck, and we've got a fine hand. We'll kick things off with Temple. And I don't mind an extra land since we've got double wizardry. Then turn to Channeler. Opponent appears to be on the blue-white version. And a Temple of Enlightenment tapped. Skyclave Apparition is definitely effective against us, taking out key creatures like Channeler and Kaza. Ooh, Stormcaller was a nice draw. So I'll hit for one and then Stormcaller into Opts. Opponent takes it. And Inscription of Insights isn't bad. But I do have a lot of expensive cards already, so maybe I would rather find some cheaper cantrips. Another Channeler, in case of a Sweeper here. And do I keep Mountain? I think 4 mana is probably enough. And we'll draw more lands naturally. So I'll get rid of it. Opponent does have a second omen, so their Yurions are going to be quite scary if they get to draw two cards each time. Shatter is going to clear the board. And we'll just pass and go for a wizardry end of turn. Opponent puts Yorion in hand. Don't have a great play lined up here. Can play another wizardry. And then kind of take it from there. But I probably don't want to main phase it in case I have another shatter. Their play is likely just Yorion, Flicker, Omen. But we'll see. A third Omen. Yeah, I wish I had a counterspell for Yorion right about now.
It's gonna be a birth instead. Possible they're keeping up a counterspell here. Or they're afraid of a counterspell and didn't wanna commit Yorion yet. Pacifism, sure. So, end of turn, we'll add another wizardry to the board. And then, how much damage can I deal here? I could play, let's say, kicked into the royal on pacifism, royal eruption my opponent's face, so that's two prowess triggers. So, that's quite a bit of damage here. Uh, puts my opponent to two life. So, that's very close to dead. Yeah, that's probably the play. I mean, next turn they make a wall, the turn after they gain two, but it does put my opponent in lethal range. Casa Royal Chaser. That's going to be quite powerful next turn as well if my tokens survive. But I think I want to get the most out of these prowess triggers while I can. In case my opponent does have a second Shatter the Sky. It's gonna be another Pacifism and Yorion. Alright, so if I draw another Burn Spell, my opponent's dead. If my opponent had a Glass Casket instead of Pacifism, they would have been able to exile multiple tokens by now, so this is definitely a matchup where Caskets plus Yorion shines. A different line could have been to play Magmatic Channeler and then keep the Royal Eruption in hand, and then a turn after I can maybe play Kaza, use the mana ability to play a Kicked Royal Eruption to deal some additional damage. That would have been reasonable too. Alright, so smashing for x equals 4 should do it. Can kill the wall. And attack for lethal. And yeah, Goblin Wizardry once again showing how much damage it can deal out of nowhere. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We're missing maybe a cheap one mana spell to go with the Stormcaller to play on turn 3. Facing Weaselback or Ratcap. Could hold on to the Smashing, which can maybe take out multiple One Toughness creatures. But looking at this hand, I think I would rather just play tapped on turn one. And then turn two, we can play Channeler. Opponent just pumps Red Camp to hit for three. I think I'm okay blocking the Red Camp here if they want to pump again, that's fine by me. Alright, so that's the entire turn from the opponents gone. And our late game's looking fine here, so I'm fine to just kind of play a longer game. Play another Channeler, next turn I can go Stormcaller plus Eruption, or maybe get Wizardry and play first. Depending on how many creatures the opponent has we need to kill. Intimidator. That's fine. So for now... I like just playing the Wizardry. Don't get to attack with the Channeler because they can pump Intimidator up to a 4-2. So that would be a bad attack. And then hopefully they play another creature that dies to Royal Eruption so we can kill both thanks to the Stormcaller. I'll have to take 3 here. Thorbrand, Thane of Redfell, okay. 
I guess a different line here is to just play a kick into the Royal to bounce Torbrand for a turn. Or I can just take out Torbrand with a Royal Eruption. I kind of like the tempo play of bouncing a 4-mana card. So we'll do that. And then smash for 5. Bonecrusher Giant, Channeler for 2 damage, and a Spikefield Hazard to exile it, fair enough. And they're gonna pump Intimidator. So my Stormcaller's not gonna line up great here, since I kinda want them to have another creature I can kill with Royal Eruption, but I guess now that we have an extra Stormcaller it's fine. So we'll Stormcaller plus Eruption. If I just go face, I still wouldn't have lethal here because prowess doesn't happen from the copy. Although I guess, let's see. No, never mind. I actually would have had lethal if I just cast another Royal Eruption here. But I guess now it's too late. It wasn't 100% guaranteed lethal because my opponent could have had another one mana interactive spell. Like uh, Shock or Hazard. But it was probably worth it to try and go for it. Alright, so Royal Chaser means I can play a kicked Royal Eruption, I think. So let's see, if I play another Stormcaller, I can even play a double kicked Royal Eruption. And I guess we'll take out the Giant. So yeah, probably could have won a turn sooner, but I guess it was worth it since we had a pretty sweet turn here with Kaza and then Stormcaller copying a kicked Royal Eruption for 10 damage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Kaza into Wizardry, into hopefully Restoration. So definitely gonna hang on to it. I'll need a third blue source to pull it off. But uh, yeah, it's definitely in the cards. For now we've got access to Shock in case we need to kill a key one drop, although there's not too many I can think of that are must kill. Could also decide to play Kicked into the Royal. Stormcaller plus Shock could be a play later too. I think I just want to stick to the plan of playing Wizardry. Take three. Scavenging Ooze is fine. So now Stormcaller plus Shock is looking quite good as well. Alright, so still missing the third blue source for restoration, but Stormcaller Shock seems excellent. And then, can't really use the extra mana from Kaza this turn. Now I might want to hold on to the mountain, because if I find a blue source, I'll have an extra card in hand for restoration, which could be useful. So I'll have to think about that for a second. As my opponent contemplates Seagate Stormcaller entering the battlefield. I 
I actually made a mistake here. I should have targeted Brushfire Elemental first and then scavenging Ooze with a copy. Luckily my opponent activated Ooze in response because what would have happened is Brushfire would have died first because of the copy resolving first and then my opponent would have been able to eat the Brushfire Elemental with the scavenging Ooze growing it up to a 3-3. So, small sequencing error that could have cost me quite a bit. Luckily, my opponent decided to activate Ooze before the elemental died. Questing Beast, we can bounce with into the Royal. Inscription, I can't play Kicked because it also needs triple blue. Could decide to just play Inscription to draw some cards, which is still fine. And then look for an additional blue source. So let's do that. And there's a shock as well, probably don't need that one. And then I can probably just pass and take another beating from the beast. And have access to Into the Royal in case they try and Amber Cleave me or use a fight spell. Innkeeper. And a mammoth. Alright, so I probably need to bounce Questing Beast. If my opponent has exactly Amber Cleave plus land next turn, they can replay Beast Attack with all and then cleave the beast, which would be bad. But I want to cast Restoration and I don't want to be too far behind on board. So I think bouncing the beast is reasonable. Could also bounce a Mammoth, although Mammoth I can chump with the tokens. Yeah, I guess Amber Cleave probably gets me either way here. So maybe I'm better off bouncing Mammoth, which doesn't have haste. And then we'll Restoration before playing any lanes, so we get to draw more cards. Alright, Channeler's great. And we've got four instants or Sorceries in the Graveyard, so that can block the Beast. And next turn we can play Kicked Royal Eruption. So hopefully no cleave, but it looks like a cleave to me. Alright, no amber cleave, so that worked out. They might have another beast in hand, maybe. Kaza. So let's see here. Can tap Kaza for mana, but there's no real need for kick Royal Eruption just yet. Kick things off with an opt, see what we can find. Into the Royal seems nice. And then... Can Royal Eruption, Kazandu Mammoth. Hope they don't draw adventure creatures. Play Channeler. And the tokens can start attacking. And I'll leave Kaza on defense. And yeah, my opponent explodes, so... Managed to dismantle the Gruul Adventure deck, which is one of the more popular decks in Standard. Small sequencing mistake at the start luckily didn't end up costing us, and we managed to dodge Embercleave. If my opponent had Embercleave at some point with the Questing Beast, we also would have been pretty dead. But yeah, Restoration with Kaza, awesome combo, especially if we can get Wizardry in play to generate extra mana. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand if we can find land three. Turn two Kaza, turn three Wizardry. Let's take it from there. Sample of Enlightenment. Yeah, I'll still play Kaza here. It's the upside of being able to play Wizardry. 
on turn three is quite high. Opponent's gonna mill me with a secret keeper, which powers up my magmatic channeler. Didn't draw land, sadly. So what's the play? I can opt to try and find land and then still play channeler. Yeah, I guess so. Smashing will do. Ventress Gargoyle. So, can't attack unless defending player has seven or more cards. We've got five. And can block unless you have four or more cards in hand. So it can currently block. So what do we want to do? Can use Kaza. And then play Wizardry. And into the Royal. And then I can hit for four. Or I could just play the Wizardry and the next turn go Stormcaller. I guess I'm missing blue mana to play Kicked into the Royal afterwards. So yeah, I guess going Wizardry into, into the Royal is fine. And then next turn... We can maybe go Stormcaller, double up on the shock. Banishing Light's gonna get rid of Channeler. And then we're just hoping to find more Kicker spells, essentially. So we can try and take out Gargoyle. Channeler's also excellent. Opponent currently couldn't block with a uh, Gargoyle, so I might have also been better off killing the Secret Keeper, but long-term Gargoyle's probably the bigger threat. And then unless my opponent has Shattered the Sky, we should be in the clear. Opponent passes with 4 mana. Yeah, I could attack with a Channeler or I can discard land and hope to find like a Kicked Royal Eruption to just win the game. How many copies did they mill? Only one. And anything that enables prowess is also quite valuable. Opponent taps out for Into the Story. Shadow Skull Smashing and Inscription. So, Smashing can clear the two Secret Keepers and that should be lethal. Alright, so pretty sweet ending here to our video with Blue Red Wizards. Pretty fun deck and we got to see Kaza in action multiple times, generating a ton of mana. And most of the wizards are just quite good by themselves, like Magmatic Channeler, Seagate Stormcaller. So the only unusual card is a Goblin Wizardry, but hopefully we were able to showcase the power of wizardry in the deck, synergizing quite nicely with all the cheap instants and sorceries, and of course, generating extra mana with Kaza as well. So it might not be a tier 1 deck, but still pretty fun to play, and can definitely hold its own. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. 
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.